Yo, what is up guys? It's Neo here again and uh, today we've got a bit of a special one for you. We're going to be unveiling the latest member of our team. Diego, come in here. Hey, how are you mate? Come up here. You want to say hi? Yay! <laughs> I'm just kidding guys. Diego is not the latest member of our team, but isn't he cute? Hell yeah. Alright, so. If it's not Diego, who could it be? Or rather, what could it be? What we're going to be unveiling or revealing today, the latest member of our team is... Inside this box. So let's get in there and find out. While I'm uh, unwrapping this, I'll give you guys a bit of an explanation as to um, why I'm unwrapping this package today and why I call this package the latest member of our team. So for those of you who've been tuned in and watching, I'm pretty sure that you know, generally I record on something that looks a bit like this. Uh, that's a mobile phone. Lucky in 2017, our phone camera's actually really, really good for shooting video, taking photos and all that sort of stuff. Generally, I would shoot on my S8. Um, however, I have used the S7 Edge for a few clips here and there as needed. So as I hinted in the first episode of Eating Out Down Under, I've been shooting on mobile this whole time, and honestly, it hasn't been a bad thing, but you just don't get the quality that you think you get out of shooting on a mobile phone, or rather, you don't get the sort of quality that you think makes you look like a professional in front of all these other vloggers, all these other YouTubers, and of course, all my family and friends. I want to be professional, so we went and got ourselves a new camera. By the way, yes, this is the first time I've ever done an unboxing video and it's actually really cool. I'm so excited! Shabam! There she is, guys. The new camera we have bought for ourselves is the Nikon D5500 and uh, this one comes with the kit lens or rather the 18 to 55mm kit lens. Um, I am so excited. This is the first real DSLR camera I've ever heard, uh, ever owned, sorry, in my life. Ever heard? Hmm. Anyway, this is the first DSLR camera that I've ever owned in my entire life, and boy am I excited. Some of you who are thinking of getting into vlogging will probably have questions like what camera should I get, what's the best value for money, how much does it cost, and how much is it uh, for this particular DSLR camera. Um, I can't answer all those questions, but what I can give you is a little bit of insight into my thinking process when choosing a DSLR camera. I tend to research about things, I like to watch videos, I like to check out reviews as I'm sure a lot of you do as well. I like to jump on Google, find out, you know, what are the best entry level cameras, which in this case is exactly what I search for when looking for this one. I've got a whole list because there's so many fantastic cameras out there. It's all going to come down to what works for you in terms of your budget, in terms of your expectations for the camera. I was looking for a camera that would allow me to get the best video quality uh, without spending thousands and thousands of dollars. I was looking for a camera that I'd still be able to use for photography. Um, I'm not really into photography yet, but I am a very big appreciator of fantastic photography. I've also got a friend who um, owns a D5200. His name's Rudy. Shout out to you now, Rudes. And, um, you know, it's just been amazing seeing the photos he takes with his D5200, which, mind you, was the original camera I was going to get until this one came up at a very similar price. This particular one I got on eBay. It is a used camera um, with a shutter count of, I think, around 5,000 um, photos. Every DSLR camera has got um, a shutter count for its life expectancy, if you will. Generally, it's about 100,000 or something like that, I think. So from my reading, I'm not a professional. If you're a pro and you're watching this, please comment down below so that we can give a bit more understanding to everyone because I'm still just getting into it myself. All right, so why the D5500? So I wanted something that wasn't going to cost me an arm and a leg. This camera here cost me $700. That's 700 Australian dollars, including postage. Um, and that's from New South Wales, which is on the other side of the country. Um, cool. So 
I wanted something that would allow me to vlog, something that had good sharp images, good sharp video quality that would allow me to record in 1080. Um, I'll eventually upgrade to something that allows me to record in 4K, but for now I think 1080 is plenty um, at the entry level. Some people call it an entry level camera, some people call it a mid-range camera or mid-level camera. Um, I'm not sure, but the word that probably rang true with me the most was the word enthusiasts camera. They say this is a camera for enthusiasts, which I certainly am. I'm enthusiastic about video, obviously, because I'm shooting this blog. I'm enthusiastic about photography as an appreciator, as landscapes, portraits, food, all that sort of stuff. These are things and elements that I am looking at building into eating out down under. So I need a good camera to do so. Let's get to the crux of the issue. All right, what is in here? so excited I have waited for this ever since I clicked buy oh all right cool bit of styrofoam in there don't care about that very very important if you're a dude and you do not read the instructions for your camera I'm not sure if I respect you less or more I know us guys tend to not read instructions for things like Ikea furniture and all that but damn you need an instruction manual for a camera, particularly if you're looking at learning more about the camera, becoming more professional in your approach to photography and video. Uh, this is gonna come very, very handy. So I'm stoked to have that in there, even though it's second hand, um, it's got everything, which is really cool. I've uh, got some cables here, uh, which I'm assuming are gonna let me hook that up to uh, an external monitor of sorts. Got the handy strap, Came with a strap. Oh yeah, that's the lens. We'll get to this one later. Yep, got my battery charger, pretty standard. Yeah, there's a couple of scuff marks. It's second hand, I knew that. I wasn't expecting something brand new, but I am still pretty pleased with um, how, how it's all going so far. Now, I'm not sure what this is here, but it looks like it goes into the hot shoe mount. Uh, if someone knows what that is and you want to tell me what it is, please hit me in the comment section below. Right, uh, we've got our Nikon battery. By the way, anyone who calls this a Nikon, that is incorrect. This is a Japanese product. There is no such thing as Nikon in Japanese. This is Nikon, all right? Say it correct, and whatever we don't get the other, say that you want. All right, cool. Now the main event, there she is guys, there is the Nikon D5500, uh, you guys have seen it before, I have, I haven't even seen the camera from the front yet, oh wow, that is in pristine condition, there are no scratches, there are no marks, no abrasions, no nothing, this for all intents and purposes, and for what I'm going to be using it for, is a new camera that is really cool the one thing that really attracted me to the d5200 hence why i was looking at that one is the fact that it's got this swivel screen which will allow you to you know take videos and um, you know, essentially i'll be able to see myself when i am shooting video as opposed to having to look at myself in the screen or screen of a uh, phone camera I'm gonna be able to look straight into the lens while having the live view there. So good to have that, particularly when you're vlogging, you wanna be able to see yourself at all times. So this screen was the reason why I wanted to go for the D5200. You may be wondering why I didn't choose uh, Canon. A Canon camera is a great, but for some reason, every single review that um, I read or that I watched pretty much put Nikon above Canon just in the camera body itself. However, place that Canon won 100% of the time over Nikon was in the lens category because they do really, really sharp, really clear lenses. I don't know yet if I'll be able to use Canon lenses with this camera. Again, I'm still getting into it. If you're a pro, help me out. Comment, please. I need all the help I can get. All right, so that was it. This guy, good body on the, on the, on the Nikon better lenses on the uh, Canon. Don't know why I thought the body was probably more important than the lenses. It's not for photography, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the body is, is the be all and end all. It does have some handy features, which um, a lot of Canons in this level don't. Um, but yeah, you're always gonna get a sharper lens or a better lens or better glass with your Canon, your Canon lenses. The other thing um, which, actually turn this on and see if it's 
I have to put the battery in first. This is pretty cool. I don't know how to do anything yet, and I'm trembling. There we go. The other cool thing about this uh, this camera, and the thing that also drew me to it, um, probably more than the 5200, is that this screen here is also a touch screen. Now, I may get a close up on that, just so you can see how that works. Okay, it says lens not attached. I'm assuming that um, it's, it's not gonna let me operate it until the lens is on. The touch screen here is just showing you all the different settings for the camera. So obviously without a, a lens attached, I'm not gonna be able to change my aperture. I'm not gonna be able to change my ISO or my ISO, um, nor am I gonna be able to adjust my uh, shutter speed. So it makes complete sense. Um, there's, there's nothing on there. There's no lens on there, so there's no information to feed the camera as yet. So we're gonna attach a lens and uh, yeah, we'll see, see how we go. This is so fun, guys. Like, you don't know. This is almost like a moment of triumph for me. I am, I can't wait to start using this thing. I've been reading blog after blog, review after review, watching video after video, and this, oh, I'm so happy to have it in my hands. I never thought I'd see it today. Your power level is under 9,000. Yeah, 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 all right, Vegeta. Under 9,000. Now, I'm just gonna be really careful while opening this up. I mean, it's the only lens I have, so I don't wanna damage it right off the bat. There we go. Oh, that's pretty cool. Again, this is not something I'm used to dealing with. I'm not used to dealing with camera lenses and that sort of thing. This is still all very, very, very new to me. So, uh, yeah, bear with me as I try to figure out how to get that one on. Don't worry, I've watched videos on how to do it. I'm not a complete new. Beautiful. Uh, that one also has a lens cap on it, which is great. That looks so nice. So this is the D5500 in profile with the lens on. Here is a front view of that one there. And of course on the back, let's turn them on and uh, have a look at how that touchscreen works. All right, a little message on there. Before taking photos, well, hang on, don't, don't disappear on me, mate. I'm still trying to read. Before taking photos, rotate the zoom ring to extend the lens. Okay, so the zoom ring is, there we go. Oh, we got him. How cool is that? Look yeah. All right, guys, um, now that I've actually got the lens on, you can see the information on the back there. It's uh, still in auto mode, hence why, uh, get the screen back on there. Don't worry, guys, I'll figure out how to use this eventually. I think the battery is pretty low. All right, either way, um, we'll get, get you straight into there. So you can see on the back there that all of these buttons are now lighting up. Because it's in auto mode, you know, a few things are changing here and there as the lens adjusts to what it can see. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So when I hit the I button there, it takes me into another sub menu. I'm really not sure what all of this means as of yet, but I just wanted to show you that it has got the touch screen in it. It is really responsive. Um, I believe I have to set it for me to touch all my individual settings. I'm not actually sure. I'll let you know about that later. But guys, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, I'm gonna go shoot some video with this guy this week. So for our episodes coming this week, lucky for you, that means you're no longer gonna be watching any of my crappy phone camera videos, which is good for me too, because I hate looking at them to be honest. But guys, this is a momentous occasion for us here at Eating Out Down Under. Um, and I look forward to seeing how much we can better, better make our content with this camera. I hope you guys have a good one. This is Neo from Eating Out Down Under, signing off.